and we are underway here at Sao Paulo and we will see the two McLarens getting off to a good start and Johnny Herbert alongside Matt Jordan's actually got ahead of Damon Hill so Johnny Herbert gaining the position from the start and into fifth um, so we're going to have a look now see if uh, Rubens can make him move going down to oh my goodness me <laughs> Go back with Barry Callow. There is a Jordan behind us, and that's not good at all. Is this Minardi deliberately trying to sabotage our race? You having a laugh? More drama. Drama alert has happened. David Coulthard is out of the race for an engine failure. Oh shit, everything. Frenson is actually on a charge here now. Barry I've damaged the car too much to continue. Damn it! Shit! You stupid driver! No! Mika Hakkinen wins the Brazilian Grand Prix. He finished fourth in the opening round, and I think the team will be happy with his performance as he crossed the start finish line. Here at Interlagos to take another fourth place. Hey what's up, it is Dan or DMAD96 here and welcome back to our F1 Manager career with Stuart GP. Um, and in this episode we're going to be doing the San Marino Grand Prix in Imola. A quick recap so far of what's happened. In the first two races in Australia we finished in third Rubens Barrichello and fourth with Johnny Herbert. And in Brazil it was pretty much going to be the same result as it was in Australia but unfortunately Barrichello had a... I think it was a suspension failure or a barge board failure towards the end of the race which cost him off a podium finish. Mind you we still got fourth place with Johnny Herbert. Um, in the Drivers' Championship we are fourth and sixth. Johnny Herbert ahead since he scored in both the races so far. Barry Califone scored in the last one and in the Constructors' Championship we are uh, third place behind Ferrari. Yes, yeah, so the San Marino Grand Prix is going to be the race we're going uh, to be doing today. But now let's move on as we have some news to announce for the 2000 Formula 1 season. First up to announce their suppliers is Sauber, who have managed to retain their Magneti Morelli electronics and Brembo brakes. Seems to be a good move for the Swiss team, but if they want to make any improvements, they need to find an engine supplier more reliable than their current Petronas engines. Bernardi have been slowly on the decline, and their announcement of Vistine electronics doesn't seem to be the right move for them. A lack of funds seems to be the main reason for this downgrade from their Magneti Morelli power that they are currently using for this season. Prost have your team to make an announcement, and after a decent start to the 1999 season, Alan Prost has chosen to remain with Attack Electronics for 2000. However, none of these announcements were as shocking as McLaren's. Team principal Ron Dennis has confirmed that he has signed a deal with Ford Z-Tech engines for next season, in a move that has shocked many. The McLaren boss has also said but he is spending 800 grand more than what his current Mercedes-Benz engines cost right now. Stuart GP boss DMAD96 was the first of many to express his thoughts on the decision. <laughs> so that's all the news for this week. Now let's get down to the track to watch the practice for the first European round of the season. Okay, so practice has just finished here for the San Marino Grand Prix. And very interesting, actually, Michael Schumacher is the fastest driver ahead of Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard. And I don't think Schumacher's been the quickest driver in a practice session in this series. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, so, usual top six really of Ferraris, McLarens, and Jordans. And then we're in seventh and ninth, Barry Callow. Uh, ahead of Johnny Herbert and then Ralph Schumacher in between us. Giancarlo Fisichella sitting down in 10th place and yeah, so a pretty normal practice session. Uh, it's what to expect really from this series. Apart from Damon Hill really in 4th ahead of Eddie Irvine. That's pretty interesting. So now that's pretty much practice. Now it's time to move on to the qualifying report. The European season kicks off at Imola for the San Marino Grand Prix. With a 100% record of wins so far this season, can anyone step up to the blistering pace of the two McLarens? Minardi and Ares once again line up on the back two rows. Luca Badoa starts in last, whilst Pedro de la Rosa wins a back marker scrap in 19th. Just ahead of the four drivers was Olivier Panis in the Pros, two places off teammate Jano Trulli. Ricardo is on to splits for two Pros as teammate Jack Villeneuve has another solid qualifying to start 13th. 
Both Sauber's lineup in 14th and 15th being led by the ex Ferrari driver John Lacey. And Carlo Fisichella just scrapes into the top 10 with teammate Wurz in 12th, whilst the two Williams cars start directly ahead of each Benetton driver. The fastest four teams line up in a 2x2 formation in the top 8. The two Stewarts line up on row 4 with Rubens Barrichello beating teammate Johnny Herbert, ahead of the two Jordans with Heinz Alfredson leading the way. Michael Schumacher narrowly beats teammate Eddie Irvine on row 2, whilst it's another pole position for Mika Hakkinen. Can the Flying Finn make it two wins in a row here at San Marino? Ok so we just finished the qualifying session for the San Marino Grand Prix and we're on the strategy now, both drivers are going to be doing a two stop strategy and uh, Johnny Herbert's going to pit first, nothing really new in the qualifying results, pretty same-ish as the last two races, uh, both McLarens on the front row, both Ferraris on the second row, both Jordans on the third row and both Stewarts on the fourth row. Pretty much no difference there. I think it's going to be a tough challenge beating Jordan, I think. As long as we try and push hard if we can. We try and get past them on the track, it's going to be very tough, I think. But, uh, we're going to try our best. But now, it's time to move on to the race. So, here we are ready for San Marino Grand Prix. So hopefully it's going to be a good one. So that's what we're about to illuminate here. And the San Marino Grand Prix a bit late on that there is... Uh, as everyone gets off the line now, Rubens Barrichello in 6th position, it says, I believe, yeah, I think it means 7th, as the two McLaren's get off to a good start, but Jordan's, I think, having a scrap just ahead of us, you can see, I think, either, I don't know if one of them is making a move or defending, but Barrichello staying in 7th position, one of us, Ralph Schumacher, trying to pass Johnny Herbert behind, I don't know if we can get to that, this is Johnny Herbert, and he's, been, he's defending from the Williams going, oh, what the hell was that, what was that, Johnny, what was that, you just let one of our rifles through, I know he hasn't scored any points for the season, uh, you've just let uh, have a Williams through. Uh, not, not good there, not good there at all, but hopefully Johnny can regain a position off the Williams driver. Meanwhile, back at the front, nothing new is happening. Mika Hakkinen leading from David Coulthard and then Michael Schumacher and Eddie Irvine in third and fourth. And the Jordans, you can see, just look at the gap from the Jordans and then you can see the Ferraris and the McLarens are no way near the rest of the field so it looks like it's going to be another McLaren and Ferrari dominance. So on to lap 6 of this Grand Prix and as you can see on the mini map uh, the Jordans are slowly starting to pull away from us. Damon Hill has got past Heinz Alfredson and they are pulling away from us and it seems to me now that the Jordans have managed to find their pace that they didn't have in the first two races because we were obviously quicker than the Jordan cars and it seems now Jordan are faster. So it's going to be tough to beat them, I think. I think the only chance we're going to finish in the points now is probably down to retirements. Meanwhile, back at the front of the field, nothing much happening. It's still McLaren 1-2. Ferraris are still running behind in third and fourth. And Rubens Barrichello has retired from the Grand Prix. He's just become the first retirement of what seems to be a driver error on lap 7. So not good there, to be, for, to be fair. Um... Yeah, so, not happy with that at all. Meanwhile, lap 14, Johnny Herbert is an absolute mile behind Heinz Alfredson, but he is ahead of Ralph Schumacher, slowly pulling away from the Williams driver, uh, who is now trying to get past bat markers. He's got the Menardis and the Arrows ahead of him, you can see on the map. But, yeah, points is going to be a bit hard, I think. Just keep Johnny on push for the time being, then I'll try and put him down to hold position before he pits. So we're now on to lap 20, lap 19 of our race. Um, we are in sixth position. Uh, we've got two more retirements in Verts and Janae. And, yep, we're just, we're just still desperately trying to hold position here. And Damon Hill has retired from the Grand Prix. That's going to help us because he was in the points in that, Jordan. And now we are in the points. We are set to score one point at the minute. Uh, so Johnny Herbert has made his pit stop. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to show it. He is stuck behind Alex Zanardi at the minute. Um, hopefully he can get past. We're going to put him on push for this lap because I, just so he can get ahead of everyone else who is, uh, who is due into the pits. That's what has seemed to worry me now. I think Fizzy Keller... Yeah, he, he's jumped us in the pit stop, so that's not good. Um, so, yeah, we're now in seventh. We're just uh, keeping it on push, trying to get past the Benetton. Obviously, uh, Benetton are one of our rivals this year, so it'd be good if we can beat them. Nothing much happening, really. Oh, as soon as I say that, Eddie Irvine's out of the race. Another retirement. Another retirement for the, for, for the Ferrari driver. That's put us into the points. And... I think I mentioned this at the start, Eddie Irvine hasn't scored a point yet this season. That's his third retirement in a row. 
So, it's not looking good for the Ferrari team at the minute. Eddie Irvine, another retirement for the Irish driver. And shortly after that, we just got ahead of Giancarlo Fisichella. So, that's good to see. Hopefully, we can stay in that position. We're going to keep it on push, try and pull a gap from the Benton driver. But as it stands, we're going to score two points. Oh, we're in the podiums! We're in the podiums. We've got two major retirements. Coulthard and Frentzen. Suspension for Coulthard. Engine failure for Heinz Howe Frentzen. And because of that, we are now into third position of the San Marino Grand Prix. Can we hold on to it now? And try and bring the car home in third position. It'd be brilliant if we can. Yeah, just, I, just hope, I just hope we can do it. I just hope we can do it. So here is Johnny Herbert, actually. Just about to enter the pit box for his second and final pit stop. On course for podium finish is the British driver. As uh, he now enters the pits, hopefully this will be a good stop. So we can retain that third position. He is in hold position now. We're going to put him on push after the pit stop as well to try and see if we can gain time to the cars ahead and get past them. So as he enters the pit box now, there is the pit crew. Hopefully this will be a good stop for him. So a decent pit stop there for Johnny Herbert. Hopefully he can push to get past Ralph. Oh, no, he is doing a two-stop strategy. We are ahead of Ralph Schumacher. And we are in third position. Can we hold on to this towards the end of the race? Fizzy Keller is 54 seconds behind. I don't think he is. I think that must be a glitch because uh, we are still on the same lap, actually. Come on, Johnny. Just keep the car on the road. What's the wear looking like? It's looking good, apart from the barge balls and suspension. The engine's not looking too good either. Oh, God, I'm worried now. Meanwhile, out in front, Mika Hakkinen is a mile ahead and is unchallenged at the minute. If he wins this race, I think he'll move into the lead of the Drivers' Championships. He just crossed the line now to start his 54th lap of the 63-lap Grand Prix. Not far away from the end now. Is that what I've... Am I seeing what I just think I saw? Michael Schumacher is out of the race. An engine failure. It's going to be a double retirement for Ferrari. We're in second place with three laps to go. Come on, Johnny. You can do this, mate. You can get this podium position. As long as you can stay ahead of Ralph. This is actually looking tense now. May put it in push, try and push a gap. He is gaining fast. Actually, no, Ralph Schumacher is out of the race. Ralph Schumacher's out. What a crazy race this is. Nine finishes. I think this is about the same amount we had at the Brazilian Grand Prix. We're in second, and it looks good for the time being. We're going to go back to hold position. Not ease off, because Fisichella is still close, is closing in slightly. But we're looking good here for a second. Here we are on board with Mika Hakkinen, the reigning champion. And I think he's going to be championship leader now with the win that he is going to collect here for San Marino Grand Prix. Michael Schumacher has retired, Eddie Irvine has retired, so has David Coulthard, and Mika Hakkinen is left to pick up the pieces to take a fantastic victory, his second victory of the season. But can Johnny Herbert do it? Can he hold on to Fizzy Keller? Can he keep the car on the track and collect a fantastic second? And here we are with Johnny Herbert. He's got lucky with the retirements. He finished fourth in Australia. He finished fourth again in Brazil. And now Johnny Herbert goes round the final corner. And what a day it's going to be for the Stewart team. It's second place. Their best result since the 1997 Monaco Grand Prix. Giancarlo Fisichella is going to come across the line to take third position for the Benetton team. So a good result for them. And a shame for Jack Bill. He was running in fourth. Actually, he's been overtaken by uh, Jarno Trulli. And both Pross drivers are going to score points, it seems. That is the final result here of the San Marino Grand Prix. Eight finishes. I think that is the same amount as the Brazilian Grand Prix that we had. But Mika Hakkinen has won. And he's going to have a big lead in the championship due to all of his rivals retiring from the race. And Johnny Herbert has managed to prevail from that. He is going to take... Well, a well-deserved second-place finish for the Stewart team. Brilliant, brilliant drive. And I'm, I'm not so sure if I should sign Johnny Herbert next year. I I don't know. But he's done, a, he's done a brilliant job to take second in this race. I think mostly down to luck because of the amount of retirements that we had. Obviously, most of mechanical problems. But it's good that we managed to keep our car fine and safe. And Johnny Herbert has taken second place here at the San Marino Grand Prix. 
with Giancarlo Fisichella rounding up the final podium position. Uh, Jana Trulli fourth, Jack Vilna fifth. So the first points for Prost and BAR and Olivier Panis also getting the points. And Arrows coming so close to points, seventh and eighth to Kaki and De La Rosa. Unlucky for them. I think even more unlucky for Williams. I think Arrows, Williams and I think Minardi the only teams that haven't scored points yet this season. So uh, we're going to move on to the standings now and uh, just confirm that. This is interesting. <laughs> I actually can't believe this is, this is already happening. Now and Johnny Herbert, uh, because of his points finishes, has moved into um, second place in the championship. Obviously a, a joint second with Michael Schumacher and uh, obviously tied on points. Schumacher has more second places though. So Schumacher technically is ahead, but uh, the alphabet has put Johnny ahead of Michael. So Johnny Herbert on 12 points with Michael Schumacher and Nicker Hacken are moving into the lead of the Drivers' Championship with 20 points now. And I think it's going to be like the actual 1999 season. I think McLaren are going to uh, probably win this Drivers' and Instructors Championship. But Johnny Herbert, due to a second place at the San Marino Grand Prix, has moved himself into joint second with David Coulthard. Uh, dropping down to fourth and Heintal Frenton in fifth, Barry Kelly still in sixth despite retiring from the race. We've also got new point scorers in Jack Villeneuve and the two cross drivers of um, Jano Trulli and Olivier Panis. Still several drivers yet to, yet to get points including Eddie Irvine being one of those drivers. Constructors Championship, we've moved into second place thanks to, thanks to um, Herbert's amazing drive to keep the car on the road and finish in second. McLaren are pulling away out in front. I don't think we are going to finish second. That's just a bit unrealistic. But we're ahead of Ferrari. Again, not for much longer, I don't think. Jordan in fourth. And Benson even closing in on Jordan slightly with some more points for Fizzy Keller. It's his second points finish of the season, I believe. Still three teams, like I mentioned earlier, yet to score. And the Team Manager Championship. And I know in the first two rounds, I said Alan Prost didn't really deserve... Uh, to be where he is right now in the manager standings, but I think after a, uh, uh, but I think after a result like that is deserved definitely for uh, Alan Prost. Second at the minute, head of Ron Dennis, head of Rocco Benton. We are currently top uh, with 11,000 points. Frank Williams uh, and uh, Tom Walkinshaw at the bottom, and John Tot uh, in ninth. And I don't really know why. He's doing all right I think it might have been because of the double retirement today that is uh, his team's home Grand Prix as well so yeah not very good for John Top but we are leading one of the three championships and uh, to be honest it's the least important one out of the three so that was the San Marino Grand Prix and well hopefully I'd love to repeat our form of the next race I don't think we will though because it's the Monaco Grand Prix and uh, obviously you guys uh, uh, no, the Monaco Street Circuit's uh, narrow, can't really overtake, and very famous circuit, the jewel of the F1 calendar is the Monaco Grand Prix, uh, known for its narrow uh, and tight corners, and lack of overtaking opportunities, so it should be a good race, and after previous experiences, uh, I think both of race and qualifying look like they're going to be crazy. Uh, so before I end the video here guys, I just want to say thank you for the support of the series so far from the first two episodes. Uh, I'm glad you guys are enjoying the series much I'm enjoying making it as well. Please if you like comment down below and subscribe if you're new to the channel uh, because it's the Easter break for me now if we can get 10 likes on this video I will upload the next episode which will be this one uh, the day after this one is uploaded. Um, I don't know when that will be. So once again thank you guys for the support on the series. Until next time guys with Big Man Night 6 I'll see you guys next time.